Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to the series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through just one thing. Usually I go through like three or eight or ten, but, but just one today. Um, it's When Sea is Calling, a guide for nautical adventures by Atelier Clandestine. Uh, so, a couple things about this. First of all, I love this book. First of all, I'm just going to say that off the bat. It's incredible. It's only 45 pages, but it is awesome. If you know Atelier Clandestine stuff, you'll know that um, it's great. I used a ton of their uh, different tables from the sandbox generator in my binder, my uh, adventure binder, or my, my adventure creation binder that I put together a few a couple months ago now. I have videos on that. You guys can check that out. Well, they were really kind enough and reached out to me and offered me a review copy of this. So they sent me the free PDF and then they gave me the uh, option to get the hardcover book at cost, which I did. I bought it at cost. So um, yeah, it gave me a big discount on the hardcover book and the uh, and, and then got the PDF for free. So thank you guys for that very much. I'm really happy that you did because this is a fantastic, fantastic supplement. So cool. I'm going to go through it in a bit here. The art is funny. It's it's light. It's like the uh, sandbox generator um, throughout. But I really like the way that the book is uh, put together. I really like the colors that are used. It reminds me a little bit, as, you'll, as you go through it, as you'll see, it reminds me a little bit of the uh, Neverland book um, from... Uh, I forget who put that book together, but I reviewed it a few, a few, well, actually near the, <laughs> like last year, um, in like October or something like that. Um, the Neverland book for 5e, but it's, uh, it has a similar silhouette style. It's different kind of like, you know, high contrasting colors. And in, in that case, it's like green, but this one has some blue and some yellow. Not every page has that sort of look. Sometimes it has the more, mm, I would say more like the cover, uh, but a lot of it is like this, and I like the way it looks. So you can see the table of contents here. Essentially, this is everything you'd need to run a naval campaign or to generate a naval campaign, uh, a naval hex crawl, uh, whatever it might be. I love this idea. You combine this with a few other books out there, like The Curse of the... Um, oh, goodness, what is it? Uh, Curse of the Black Crag, or Secrets of the Black Crag. Yeah, yeah, Secrets of the Black Crag is what it's called, um, which is that island hopping campaign for Old School Essentials. I've reviewed it as well. It's so, so good. Um, I'll put links below to where you can get all this stuff. That's one of the best adventures out there as far as I can tell from Old School Essentials. It's so good. But you combine this with that, you combine this with Hot Springs Island, you combine this with a few other, you know, like naval supplements out there, uh, ocean-faring campaigns. There are a couple one-shots you could put, you could uh, combine with this, like um, the, uh, the sunbathers from the Oh, goodness, I keep on forgetting the names of all these things. From the Old School Essentials Anthology, the Adventure Anthology, uh, where you have the, the island with the cult of the sunbathers. Put that island out here, too. Just great stuff. But anyway, I'll go through it and, and show you guys, uh, get a sense of what it's like, so you can decide if you want to get this for yourselves. So you have the introduction, and you have the encounters and the factions. So there are factions throughout this book. There is a setting, or, or it's a very, like, neutral setting, but there is a setting implied in this book, and you get details of it later. And you get the, the factions, right, that uh, are allied, neutral, or enemies with each other from that setting, but just generally throughout this whole book. But you have encounters. You start off with a good encounter stable, right? Um, a ship encounter, something goes wrong with your ship or something happens at ship. Uh, then you have a something goes wrong, right? Uh, then you have monsters and the special encounters. So something goes wrong. What is it? Is it a ship event? Is it a crew event? Or is it a sea event? You have those right there. Um, and then you have monsters and then special. And then there are some optional things to determine how many enemy ships are encountered. So that's the idea, right? If you roll one or a two, you encounter a ship. A three or four, something goes wrong. Five monster. Six is a special event. And you can see what those are here. I like some of these special events quite a lot, right? You have, of course, of course you can get a ghost uh, ship. You can get mermaids, you can get a mimic ship, that's a great idea. A tax officer's ship. Uh, you can get the Navy's secret weapon, which is a table you can roll on later. Um, you can run into an ice bird or a reef. You can run into El Diablo or fish tacos. <laughs> or you can, you can uh, uh, lose your anchor or lose your, your rats can infect your ship. Or you can realize you have tons of rats on board. Maybe they're giant rats, or maybe they're mutated, or whatever it is. You can come up with that stuff like that. So anyway, this is a great random encounter table to start off, and then you go right into it. You have a ship generator. So the faction of the ship that you're going to run into, the type of ship, 
the state of the ship, special equipment on the ship, and the type of special equipment that you could have, um, what's in the ship's hold, right? Nothing, empty barrels, food and water, passengers or stowaway. Um, are there civilians, right? Um, are there merchants? Yeah, are there Navy pirates? You can see what the six, seven, eight will be, right? Because one through five is the same for every kind of ship. But if it's a civilian ship, then it's going to be different. If it's a merchant ship, it's going to be different. It's going to be navy or pirate ship, it's going to be different. If it's a special ship, it's going to be different. So again, the idea is one through five is always the same, Commodore factions, but six, seven, eight will be special. I like that idea too. That's something that you could use for other random encounter tables in your own settings. I like that a lot. Uh, you get the events that can possibly happen in Commodore factions or navy pirate, pirates, pirates or privateers, etc. Flag randomization, right? You're going to generate a flag because if you're sailing on the ship, on the, on the sea, you need lots of ships or not, lots of flags, I should say. And that's really, really cool. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. You have the figurehead. What does a figurehead look like? The crew. What is the crew like? Ship attributes. And this is going to be important if you're going to do, you know, things like fighting at sea, naval combat, right? You need to know the cannons, maneuverability, the hull, the speed of it. I think that's really, really cool. There are whole systems implied or or uh, presented for how to do things like naval combat. I've always wanted to do a um, a naval campaign where the, the party is you know, part of your pirates. Uh, I started one and I got like I don't know maybe ten sessions into it, but the, the, the players only had just gotten their first ship. And they had only just done their first like expedition as a pirate crew, and it wasn't even to take an enemy ship. It was to go to a uh, you know um, mysterious island with a treasure map and explore. So they, it was more of you know just regular exploration. They didn't serve as pirates, so we didn't do any naval battles or anything like that. And uh, I've always liked the idea ever since I played Skies of Arcadia as a kid. I loved the idea of having a different system for ship combat, and then having your regular combat, and having those kind of go hand in hand, and having some boss battles that are ship fights, and some boss battles that are regular fights, and I think that's really cool. You could definitely do that in a campaign like this, using this book. Rules for upgrading and repairing ships. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Um, there's, of course, black powder weapons, because you know, you're going to be dealing with cannon, and flintlocks, and pistols. This is really cool, so you have an idea of the, the, you get the silhouettes of the kinds of ships you're looking at, and their cost, and then you get a breakdown on the next page of what they are, right? So you can go back, you have to flip back and forth, but that's fine. The caravel and what it, uh, the modifiers that it gives, what it is exactly, right? You get a brig, a frigate, a galleon, etc. A whole bunch of different ships. Now these are of a very particular era, right? So this is not gonna apply to things like, you know, triremes or galleys. You could probably find stats for them, and once you know the basic idea here of the different Things like cannons, maneuverability, hull, speed, tonnage, and crew, you could make your own fairly easily with using these as sort of, um, you know, guidelines. Then you have monster ships, small monster ships and large monster ships. It's much simpler. And then, of course, ship name generators. This is an important thing. Got to have awesome pirate ships, the Black Pearl, right? Uh, that's uh, the Flying Dutchman, these classic names that we know from uh, the Revenge, uh, from, uh, from history and from fiction. You got to have a good pirate ship name. A generic caravel, generic frigate, and then you have some pirate generators because, of course, you got to have crazy pirates, and that's amazing. What do they look like? Right? What are the small fry? Uh, it's the common fry. But what are the legendary pirates like? And then you have the appearance, the items that they use, their story, why, why life piracy, and their tale of legend. What makes them legendary? That's so cool. That's so cool. You have bad guys of the sea, so sailors and pirates, admirals, pirates, but then you also have spider crabs, uh, crevette pistoleros, <laughs> crevettes, crevette pistolero band together, and come out of the sea to attack much larger ships such as merchant ships. For every crevette pistolero that flees in battle, two come back as reinforcements the next round. Fun fact, the guys used, the guns used by crevettes pistolero are made of seashells. <laughs> right? So funny, weird El Diablo, right? It's a, it's a, it's a stingray or a manta ray with a trident. They often hide in the sand. That's hilarious. Narwhal Jr., Shark Man, Fish Tacos, a Metal Turtle. Uh, Do you know the fish taco shell is not edible? Just hilarious random stuff you could throw into your, you know, into your, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, it curses and Legends. The captain and crew cannot set foot on ground except to dig for treasure on an island. Uh, there is a giant whirlpool that can take you back to the past or to the future if you're crazy enough. 
The sailors have been turned into parrots by a sea witch and are trying to sail their ship as best they can, right? It's hilarious. I love these ideas. You throw these into your world. Have a Maybe they're true. Maybe they're related to being true. Maybe they're close to being true. Maybe they are not true at all. Um, but it's hilarious. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Uh, beach finds. Natural artificial bottles and chests. Perfect thing to roll, uh, put into a random uh, hex crawl or random encounter tables. Uh, fishing rules. Because you're going to go fishing at sea, you got to have rules for it. And there's a lot of good rules here. <laughs> Bad situations, equipment related, generic, bait related, uh, how to generally do it, and the different catches you can do. Salt water, fresh water, special fish. You know, this, if you threw this all together with the bottled ocean or the bottled sea, forget what it's called, it's one of those hex crawl adventures. Um, it's one of those uh, hex crawl sets that came out a few, well, maybe, maybe a couple years ago. The Bottled Ocean is a fantastic supplement. And there's whole rules for fishing and stuff like that too, and a whole bunch of extra ships and stuff like that. If you combine these, this with that, oh man, that would be amazing. Uh, whale encounters, because you gotta have some whales. And then sperm whale hunting. Fantastic. I love this. Sperm whale hunting and what you can get from them. Uh, ambergris and eye lenses. Body, head, tail, belly. A very important part of seafaring life in the period that's being depicted here. You have a sea map and how that works, the different locations you can run into on it. Um, shipwrecks, the different shipwrecks that you have uh, out there, and then of course you have the actual map of the region. Now again, this is just the implied setting, you could use it, you, you don't have to, um, obviously, but if you want to, you have a whole setting right here and you can go forward and it has the islands and what's on them. So this is one of the most fantastic parts of the book. Everything that you're going to need to run uh, an interesting island hopping campaign, you could do with just this book. That's so cool. So cool. You get North Crescent Island, Emmett Island, the Navy's Outpost, Tiny Island, the Pirate Fort, the Abandoned Colony, Flaming Skull Island, and then you get generators for your own things. You can generate your own towns or the appearance, the fortifications, special buildings that might be there, other events that might be there. Um, Treasure maps and how to put them together. Here's one that they give you, but you can also come up with your own fairly easily. Oh, of course, the Jaganfar, Giganfar, Giganfari. I don't know how to say it. The lighthouse named Giganfari or Giganfari or Jiganfari. I don't know how to say that at all. Uh, but change many times. Those who wish to conquer it must be prepared to face many dangers. Um, this is great. So there's a dungeon here, basically, um, presented in the terms of the you know the creatures that you might find here, some some magic items and things like that that you could uh, get here, and the creatures you might run into. Underwater exploration and how you, what you might run into here. This would be great to combine with uh, the uh, oh gosh again I keep on forgetting the name of it. I, I'm I'm the worst at remembering names on uh, at a moment's notice. But the uh, Secret of the Black Crag, there's a whole bit about um, going down under the water and there's like, you know, ancient uh, submarines you can find and things like that. This would be a great combination with that. The Mermaid Palace. <laughs> really cool. Queen King Jasper and Queen Cordelia. Eldest Princess Cora and her husband Niall. The twin princesses Sapphire and Ruby and the youngest Princess Kiana. Really excellent. Really excellent. Situations that you run into down there. The mermaid generator, you're going to need that. The Navy's secret weapon. right? The Navy submarine obviously has a huge tactical advantage due to its unique ability to hide and move underwater. Uh, this is fantastic. <laughs> what the Navy's secret weapon is like and all the different you know, compartments in it. This would be a great little dungeon or something you could take control of. It would be fantastic. The intrigue generator. right? So this is a whole bunch of... You just roll a few times and you can develop your own... Uh, situation, right? Uh, an NPC in action target and a consequence, a monster action in target, or a treasure action location in trouble. So basically a quest generator, right? Uh, if you roll on the monster table, you can get shark men have invaded the land of an, a PC's acquaintance, or ghosts have chased off uh, another monster, and the other monster might be um, turtle men. <laughs> or you could say uh, a governor has joined forces with a privateer, and they have killers after them. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. Uh, a runaway private, a runaway uh, governor who's, who's joined a privateer to escape from killers. You run across them, have to help them, or maybe you're the privateers. Or maybe you're the, the killers, who knows? <laughs> 
Or, again, a legendary hoard was unearthed on the seabed. It is well guarded. Or the hourglass of time is hidden in a coastal city. It is coveted by many. Fantastic. Uh, retiring. So what happens when you retire? There's generic rules. Uh, faction rules and special rules for retirement. What happens to your character or NPCs after they're done? And then you have the final page. And that's it. With acronyms, more books, you can possibly get the link to the website and sources and things like that. So when C is calling, this is such a fantastic little book. I mean, little is not the right word. I mean, it's it's 45 pages uh, in this spread form, so it's quite big. You're looking at a lot of information and great, great stuff to use for a nautical adventure, if you're interested in a nautical adventure. Right? If you're not, yeah, it's going to be less interesting to just add to your collection, but man, um, I'm really glad that they sent this to me. It would have been one of those things that, you know, I try to I try to go for the free or pay what you want products because, you know, I try to give you guys stuff out there that I know is, uh, you know, not going to break the bank, right? <laughs> and free is a good price and pay what you want, you know, just a couple dollars, two or three dollars or sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, it, you know, it's definitely something you, most of us can handle these days. But this is a great document. I highly recommend it. You know, I've been sent things that, um, that I just don't, I don't like. <laughs> and I won't recommend them. I don't show them on my channel. I'm like, thanks. I'm not interested in, in making a video on this. Uh, as soon as I got this, I was like, yep, I, I'm going to make a video on this because it's right up my alley. The random tables, the utility, the quirkiness, just all of it. I don't know. I think this is right up my alley. Fantastic stuff. I hope you guys like it too. Um, and, and again, like I said, if you combine this with a few other books, right, you combine this with The Bottled Ocean, you combine this with Hot Springs Island, you combine this with The Secret of the Black Crag, you're looking at a fantastic, really well-developed, really fu uh, fun and, and, and engaging aquatic piratey adventure. You know, Secret of Monkey Island, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Atlantis, The Lost Empire, like all of these influences. Fantastic. Really fantastic stuff. Um, so, hope this has been interesting to you guys, and I'll see you all in another one.